Runners. If a batsman sustains an injury during the match, he or she is allowed, at the umpire's discretion, to select a runner, another member of the batting team, to do their running between the wickets. The runner should, if possible, be someone who has already batted. The runner must also wear external protective equipment equivalent to that worn by the batsman for whom he or she runs and must carry a bat. When an injured batsman is the striker, normally the runner stands at square leg and the umpire moves to the offside. If the batsman wants to take a run, the runner and the non-striker do the running. When the injured batsman is the non-striker, he or she has to go and stand at square leg, while the runner takes the normal position at the non-striker's end. To all intents and purposes, the runner will now be regarded as the batsman he or she is running for. They are two become one, and any transgressions of the laws that the runner makes will apply to the injured batsman. Strikers and runners, beware the chaos this can cause. The injured striker's ground is always at the wicketkeeper's end, even if the injured batsman forgets about their runner and tries to hobble a run. Here, for example, the runner is edging out of his or her ground before the ball reaches the striker. This is not permitted and may result in a run out. If there is no run out, and if the striker's end umpire considers the runner to be in breach of this restriction, then he or she will call and signal dead ball as soon as the ball reaches the boundary or at the completion of the first run. All runs scored from that ball will be disallowed. For the complete rundown on runners, refer to Law 25 and Law 30 in the Blue Book.